As you know, when I wrote uh, Vessels of Fire and Glory, people accused me of writing it after COVID and everything else. And I said, that manuscript was finished nearly two years ago. Right. It didn't come out until last November. But one of the things that I, I felt that we're all trying to say is out of 2 Timothy 2, God has got a remnant that he will give nation-saving skills. Amen. God is going to design local bodies whose, whose capability will be, they are a weapon for what's going on now. Amen. God saw this coming. Amen. And, you know, I, I, can I, I just want to read one Bible please. verse. And, yeah, and please. It says in 2 Timothy 2.20, which is the verse that inspired this entire book, but in a great house, there are not only, as 2 Timothy 2.20 but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if one cleanses or separates themselves from the latter, they will be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, useful for the master's use, and prepared for every good work. Well, I want to just make a comment right away. We have a thing that was very popular, and I agree with it to a point, called the culture of honor. But if you read the word of God, it says that we are a great house. And the body of Christ is a huge house with a lot of strange ducks. And some are to honor and some are to dishonor. Right. And there are people in ministry who shouldn't be there. Right. There are voices that need to shut up. Mm -hmm. There are people that have gotten rich off the gospel for the wrong reasons. Right. And I'm a very strong prosperity uh, faith man. I believe in faith. I believe in God providing. Because when I'm blessed, I can help others. Right. I can help the poor. Right. Now, the, the, so it says, if you separate yourself from the latter, that, it's telling you right there. There are elements in the body of Christ that you've got to get away from. Mm -hmm. And he said in, in the next chapter, 2 Timothy 3, he said, having a form of godliness, but denying the power of it from right. such, turn away, get right. away. And here's what it says. I believe God is messing people up, making them desperate, restless. They don't know where they fit. They're going around saying, what's wrong with me? They're in turmoil mm -hmm. because God has chosen them to do a special work in right. this hour. That's calling he's That's frustrated good. them yeah and yeah. he said where do i fit uh, none of this stuff excites me i don't get what i don't understand what these masses of christians are getting all thrilled about right and then the bible says they will be a vessel unto honor and by not for the master's use if we if we don't confront them like jesus confronted the rich young ruler and he said, look, if you want to do this, you're going to have to give it all, give it away and follow me. He went away right. sad, and Jesus didn't chase him. No. You know, like he didn't water down, all oh, right, only give away half. And, you know, as long as you give away half, I'll let you right. in. Like, no, he doesn't negotiate. It's like, no. this is what you need to do. And that's the best advice you can give the person. Might need, we don't even know if that guy did get saved. He might have come to grips with the truth of the gospel. But, you know, if you water it down, now all of a sudden people are like, well, do you believe it or not? I say it, brother. You're preaching right now. I know we have a lot in common. Oh, yeah, we <laughs> you know do. that part where it says prepared for every good work. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I've got to tell you that uh, there's something going to happen to American preaching. There's something going to happen to it. You know who Ben Shapiro is and Jordan yeah. uh, Peterson? Yes. They have millions of followers because they destroyed false arguments. Right. Right. And years ago, American preaching became what we call anecdotal. They started just telling stories. They did not address what was going on. When gay marriage went through, the church was largely unable to give a sub substantive rebuttal to stopping it. Right. Because we were afraid of, well, we're gonna look like we're not loving. Right. That love does not rejoice in iniquity, it rejoices in the truth. Right. And let me just, here's a quick example. First Corinthians 2 said, I didn't come to you with excellency of man's wisdom. Mm -hmm. And when somebody read that, they thought that's the way all preaching should be. 
But the problem is, is there's counterbalancing verses. Acts 14 says they preached with such effectiveness that many believed. Mm -hmm. Right. Luke 21 says, I'll give you mouth and wisdom that no man can gainsay nor resist. In the amplified version of 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5, it says this. It says in the King James casting down imaginations. But here's what it says in the amplified. Destroying sophisticated arguments against the gospel. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what's going on right now. It's a bunch of lies. Yeah lied to about the virus we're being lied to about cops we're being lied to about politics we're being lied to about education we're being lied to and the the unfortunate fact is the most preaching looks at that and says well i'm just going to toss you some lukewarm spiritual platitudes that's not what finney did that's mm -hmm. not what moody did that's yeah. not what wesley did and it's not what we should do and trish I wouldn't and, have married Trish if she did that either, man. You know, like, I love that about her. She had the fire from the first day I met her. And, uh, and it, you don't really see the change in people's lives unless you give them the truth. And if you start to water it down, you don't get to the root of the problem in their life. You're loving them by giving them the truth. So I wanted to uh, just uh, to follow up with what you're saying. On page 61 in your book, you know, I love what you have here about uh, Jesus uh, ad addressing the Pharisees, right, for their judgments. And so it, I feel it just is a, it goes along with what you're talking about because you said when a preacher stands in a pulpit, or anybody for that matter, and calls out sin, it must never be a private opinion. And, and I think a lot of what's happening now, too, is a lot of people are just given opinion when it has to be based on the Word of God. What does the yeah. Word of God say? Yes. And so could you comment on, and I just love what you wrote in here and from, um, you know, about Judge Not and about the, the Pharisees were playing God and how, yeah. you know, it was their interpretation and they actually overruled, you know, what God was saying, you know, uh, and implemented their law and their way of doing things. See, what they do is uh, uh, a lot of really uh, frady cat Christians read Romans 13 and they say we're to submit to government because all government is from God and they never finish it because the explanation of that authority is that Paul went on to say they are not a threat to the righteous mm -hmm. and so if they're trying to shut down your church that is a threat to the righteous right right and in Psalm 94 it says what fellowship does God have with the throne of iniquity that devises law by evil mm-hmm and so what, what Matthew 7 was, was the end of a long sermon to the Pharisees. That, that's who he was talking to. Mm -hmm. And he said, judge not that you be not judged. And so everyone says, well, that means I should never judge anyone. But the context was, is he was telling them that they had taken it upon themselves to put the real laws of God on the side and create their own system of, of legality. Mm -hmm. And the end result was, is that if Jesus said not to judge anyone the way people think he did, then a few verses later, he's calling people dogs. <laughs> Don't give what's holy to the dogs. Right. Then he's calling people pigs. <laughs> Don't cast your pearls before swine. So, so that can't be it. Can't be it. Here, here is the context. Do not. Here's the way you read it in the original Aramaic, and it's what it means. Do not impersonate an officer of the court. Mm -hmm. That's so and that means so much more that, you know, when, when we are walking in this world, we don't judge, but the word of God can certainly judge through us if we're in the office of an officer of the court. If we're operating that God spoke to me to expose your adultery from the pulpit, God spoke to me to speak against evil from the pulpit, then that is not judging. That is right. obeying the voice right. of God. I, so, I uh, asked some of our people, well, I, t I advise them to read the letter from uh, Martin Luther King Jr. It's called Letter from a Birmingham Jail. And he does a really great job of the, the, the pastors in Birmingham have written a letter telling the people in town, don't participate in these marches because they're breaking the law. And, and he, his response was, 
there are just laws and there are unjust laws. And yes, there are. You cannot, you cannot accuse me if I'm doing it in a nonviolent way and I'm protesting the unjust law, then I'm okay telling them that they can break the law. And that's exactly what's, what you're referring to is that we're not trying to be, you know, blowing up buildings. We're just saying that if something's wrong in the culture, we have to call it out. And, and we're not afraid to take the consequence. And he wasn't. He was writing it from the jail, just like yeah. Paul wrote a bunch of letters from jail.